south of the border. Inside secret factories, masked men are cooking a cauldron of death. They're making the deadliest recreational drug on the planet, fentanyl. There's areas of Mexico that are pretty much lawless, and the cartels run them. The Sinaloa cartel is still the biggest in the world. The biggest, and according to the DEA, the baddest. The traffickers in Sinaloa have cornered the market for illicit fentanyl. We didn't, didn't really see any fentanyl around much up until around 2005, 2007. Um, we had a, a big spike in it, and we attributed that to a large super lab down in Toluca, Mexico, which was then subsequently shut down. We then didn't see any, any fentanyl in the area until about 2013, and then it just began to spike uh, exponentially. Why are the cartel bosses cutting heroin with fentanyl? DEA lab director Thomas Blackwell says it's because the white powder makes them a lot of green. A $3,000 investment into a kilo of fentanyl could easily make a million tablets of fake oxycodone tablets, which would turn about a $20 million profit. Wow. When the DEA seizes a large stash, they take it here to their highly secure drug lab. We probably analyze close to about 100 fentanyl cases in a month. Um, that's just fentanyl. There is so much fentanyl in this building, everyone, including me, has to wear masks and goggles for protection. And on the walls, almost like a fire extinguisher, packs of Narcan, a powerful antidote that counteracts an overdose. So this is a risky business all around, from the people making it to the people selling it to the people ingesting it. To the people even analyzing it, yes. Um, you, potentially deadly to you. Yes, and that's why we keep um, Narcan. Well, the way this works is you pull it off, you pull the red tab out, and you just inject it in your leg, just kind of like an, like an EpiPen type pen. And basically what that does is in the body there's a heroin or your opioid receptors and it just goes in there and blocks it. The lab workers painstakingly analyze every molecule of every seizure to determine the exact chemical composition. In this particular instance, this chemist has some unknown liquids um, that she's getting ready to do some further testing on. So you're trying to figure out what's in there? Everything, everything we get, yes, is an unknown. So we're trying to figure out what it, what it, exactly what it is. So there's a chance that fentanyl could be in that liquid? It, it could be smuggled in, it could be dissolved in a liquid, absolutely. The lab processes tens of thousands of tablets, many of them fake. Traffickers disguise fentanyl as legitimate prescription drugs. These are uh, uh, tablets that are made to look identical to oxycodone tablets. Wow. So, so they're disguising it as other prescription correct. They, pills. They try to make it look, and uh, the way we can tell, the, the tablets are not of a high quality. They crumble easily. You know, but so your average drug user, they wouldn't be they able would to tell the know. difference. They would never know. They would never know. Tablets are probably going $10, $20 on the streets, so easily that's $100,000 worth of tablet. Could easily be $100,000 wow. worth of tablet. And the most bizarre thing we learned here in the lab all the ways the cartel smuggle the stash into the states. Ironically, they even hide it inside tombstones. What's the most uh, outrageous thing that you've ever seen? You, you know, I like to say, just when you think you saw it all, you haven't. We've had um, flowers come in, um, in cardboard boxes, and all the cardboard that was used to separate or make up the box in which those flowers were contained had been soaked and saturated in heroin. For law enforcement on the front lines of the drug war, getting fentanyl off the streets is a full-time job. It didn't take much fentanyl to kill him. And for drug counselor John Venza, the fight against the cartels came too little too late to save his son Garrett. And do you think he knew that there was fentanyl no, mixed no, in with the heroin? And that's, not. most people don't, most right? Most people don't, no. There's no quality control on how heroin is cut, the purity levels. A good young man, who probably never realized his fix would be fatal. Everything I'm involved with every day, as much as I understand about this, um, my child still died. My child overdosed, my child died. He's not coming back. And it's, it changed my family forever. And I want people out there to know that there is no shame, there is no stigma. You know, he made a bad choice you miss him. Yeah, I miss him. I miss him. Sure. If you know someone who's addicted to opioids and needs help, we've put up a massive resource guide for you at CrimeWatchDaily.com. It includes where they can get help before it's too late.
I'm Chris Hansen. If you like this story, make sure you tune in every day to Crime Watch Daily. You can find where the show airs in your city at CrimeWatchDaily.com. Watch it live or record it on your DVR and watch it at night. And to all those criminals out there, remember, we are watching.